Hello everyone, this is Mr. Miller again. Today we are going to be discussing the most complex of the chordates, the primates. So to start with, we're going to look at some vocabulary words that will be used today as we are describing the different types of primates. Uh, one of those words is a boreal, which means living in trees, things that primarily spend a lot of their times living in trees. Terrestrial, which spend a lot of time living on ground, such as humans. Prosimians and simians, which are the two main groups of the primates. And then we have diurnal and nocturnal, which means whether they're active during the daytime or nighttime. And this is usually pretty easy to distinguish. Diurnal starts with a D and so does daytime. And nocturnal starts with an N and so does nighttime. And the final word is prehensial, which uh, it deals with the ability to grasp a hold or wrap around something, like the tails of some monkeys are prehensile tails, which means that they can wrap around and grasp onto a branch. Some of the characteristics of primates would include a highly developed brain, more developed sense of sight than most mammals, but a reduced sense of smell. Uh, also the presence of a collarbone in many primates. Most have hands and feet with five digits and nails instead of claws. And most of them have opposable thumbs, which means that their thumb moves in the opposite direction of their fingers. And most have greater mobility in their hips and their shoulders as well. So if we take a look at the evolution of primates, they really first came about about 65 million years ago when another important event happened, and that was, of course, the extinction of the dinosaurs. And this allowed for the age of mammals. And one of those mammals that came about are the primates. Some of the earliest would be the relatives of the lemurs and the lorises and the tarsiers, which developed somewhere probably around 50 million years ago or so. And they got more highly developed about 30 to 40 million years ago with the uh, evolution of the New World monkeys and the Old World monkeys. About 25 million years ago, there was a branch off there that went on to the much more complex apes, including the lesser apes such as the gibbons and the great apes such as the orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees, bonobos, and humans. Uh, humans probably branched off somewhere between eight and six million years ago. We do not yet have that, those remains yet, sometimes known as the missing link. So let's take a closer look at those two main groups. The prosimians are less intelligent than the simians. They, uh, would, uh, the simians would include the monkeys and the apes. The prosimians would include things such as the eye eye and the lemur and the injury. Uh, these are primarily nocturnal, which means they're more active at night. They have mostly wet noses, which is, allows them to actually be a little bit more sensitive to smell than the simians. And some of these do not have opposable thumbs, specifically the tarsier does not have opposable thumbs. Um, so if we take a look here, we also have the pato, the loris, the tarsier, and the bush babies. And if you look at those, they have very large eyes. Okay, and that is, of course, because of the fact that they are primarily nocturnal. Many prosimians are found on the island of Madagascar, where there are no simians to compete with. So the other group would be the simians, also more correctly identified today as anthropoids. Um, these are large, they have a larger, more developed brain. Uh, they have developed the use of tools. They have a more complex social structure, and they are primarily diurnal, so they're active during the daytime, and mostly dry noses, so they do rely more on the sight than they do on smell. Old world monkeys are one group here that would be found in Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. They usually have what we would call downward facing noses, and their tails are not able to grasp. And then we have the new world monkeys, which are found in Central, North and South America. And these are more flat nosed and they have prehensile tails, tails that can grasp a hold of branches, at least a large number of them do. And then we have the great apes, which are found in Africa and Asia. They have no tails and more highly developed brains. And then the humans, which also belongs to the great apes, are found on every continent. They have the most highly developed brain and 
like unlike most of the other monkeys, they do not have um, opposable digits on their feet. So in other words, our toe does not move in the op our big toe does not move in the opposite direction of our upper toes. So some of the old world monkeys would include the Allen Allen Swamp Monkey, the Doak, the Guanan, the Drill. That's a pretty scary looking face there on that drill. The colobus, the owl-faced monkey, and the mandrel. Some of the new world monkeys would include things like the sakis, the emperor tamarin, the titi, the howler monkey, the capuchin monkey, the smallest monkey in the world, the pygmy marmoset, the squirrel monkey, and the golden tamarin. And then we have the lesser apes which is getting uh, into the more complex uh, mammals and more complex primates, things like the salmoning and the gibbon. And then we have the great apes, which would include the orangutan, the gorilla, the monobo, bonobo, and the chimpanzee, which is actually our closest relative with about 98.5% of the same DNA as humans. And then we do have the humans, the most intelligent of the apes, like the Andrews, the Hines, the Hewitt, the Tanner, and the Miller. So looking at this on a chart here, we can see here the lemurs and the lorises. We're looking at things with wet nose. They have sideways nostrils. They are, these are mostly nocturnal, and they do have fairly large brains along with the new world monkeys and the old world monkeys. Um, these things would all have tails, the lemurs, the lorises, the new world monkeys and old world monkeys all have tails where the apes and the humans, no tails. The apes have larger brains than uh, the lemurs and the lorises and the other monkeys. And the humans of course have the largest brain. The lemurs and the lorises, like we said, are more active at night in the new world and old world apes and humans are more active during the day. The old world monkeys, apes and humans have downward nostrils. And from the monkeys on over, they pretty much all have a dry nose. And of course, pretty much all of them have forward facing eyes and all but a few, couple exceptions have opposable thumbs. So if we take a look at this uh, cladogram here, we can see here as things moved up, we had uh, the last of the primates with the, uh, excuse me, the first of the primates with the four kinds of teeth, movable head, front facing eyes, large brain, omnivorous, five digits on hand and foot with opposable thumbs. And we have the central eye area for more acute vision, the downward pointing nose, and then, of course, we have this is the first with the loss of the tails. And, of course, humans have no tails either. So, but we have also lost our opposable thumb on the foot. So now there are just a few questions to answer on the Google form. Thank you for listening and have a great weekend.